This episode of the Managing Major Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you think you might be feeling depressed, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, BetterHelp is here to help. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you, and you can talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. And all you have to do is just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs. And then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge at any time. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Special offer to Managing Major Podcast listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash managingmadrid. That's betterhelp.com slash managingmadrid. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring the Managing Madrid podcast. Coming up is part two of Managing Madrid's coverage of the Mbappe saga on its podcast. Part one went up yesterday, obviously, both in audio and video form. You can listen to it on your podcast app or you can find it on YouTube. Uh, they're both available. So if you have no ready, go check that out. I would recommend checking that out first. It was widely acclaimed. A lot of people felt it helpful to kind of get through the day. It was a good therapy session, but also a lot of just nuanced takes about the whole situation. We spent about an hour and a half, I think, talking about the whole thing, plus big picture stuff. Uh, so go listen to that first. And then today's podcast is a reflection a day after where Lucas Nevarete joins me to get his thoughts, how we feel the day after it all happened, and more big picture stuff as always. We also took a couple of questions that came in from patrons and then after that, we're done with this Mbappe thing. This will be our last Mbappe podcast. And after that, we shift our attention to Liverpool and previewing the final lot of podcasts and written form content planned for that. We'll do preview shows all week, and we'll also do uh, written content previewing the game as well. So look forward to discussing that final and breaking it down and doing some tactical previews of that. And in the meantime, enjoy today's podcast with Lucas and I, and let's get to it. Nice article in the Managing Madrid uh, blog. Uh, wonderful lads that do a great job there. And worth reading about that man there. So he bet the man needs to rest and the numbers reveal why. Times ended up almost looking like a 6 3 1. Some very good writing about that on the Managing Madrid website. Great podcast as well. Of course, Pere Valverde was a huge part of the equation. All right, we are recording a part two of sorts to the whole Mbappe thing, and are pre we are prepared to put a bow on it. This is the last we're going to speak of him. Today is the final day we're going to do that, and then we're going to move on quickly to Liverpool stuff because, as we all know, the club is way too big to be concerned about this stuff, as crazy as it was and does merit discussion, though. So hope you guys all enjoyed the emergency podcast yesterday. We wanted to have Lucas on yesterday, and that wasn't uh, possible. But we wanted, him on, we wanted him on yesterday because he's been as connected as anyone throughout this whole saga. He was on point with all of his reporting last summer, obviously. Um, there were some unforeseen things that no one could predict. Florentino himself was pretty sure that this was going to happen, but who knew that all of a sudden the Amir Qatar can come in with hundreds of millions of euros and just plop it down and that's it. And that's kind of the scary world we live in in the football world and the concerns that everyone has now. That's where we are. So, Lucas, I wanted to ask you, the first thing I wanted to ask you is this. I can, I can kind of, we can all kind of gather maybe how you felt yesterday given that, it was probably similar to most Real Madrid fans and the frustration with Mbappe. And also, we saw your tweets. How do you feel today? Have you has has waking up today made you reflect on it a little bit differently? Are you less frustrated now? Are you more frustrated? Are you optimistic about the team's future? Like, how do you feel today? I feel pretty similar to to yesterday in general. It's true that maybe I've. Uh... I've come to acknowledge some of the mistakes I think Real Madrid 
did in the process. And I think that these mistakes need to be addressed and need to be talked about as well. I think that obviously mm, the biggest uh, the biggest one who should be taking the blame here is probably Mbappe, whose word ultimately couldn't be trusted. But I think that Real Madrid have some some part of the of the of the blame to share as well. And obviously, some people blaming PSG for extending their own players' contract. I think they're they're missing the point here. Obviously, you can be frustrated at how PSG uh, don't play by the same rule book as the other clubs in Europe. That's that's for sure. That's for certain. But at the same time, that's not their fault. That's UEFA's and and and, and the other. Uh, the other organism's fault, not not PSE. So I think that there are reasons to be uh, frustrated at Mbappe, but also at, at Real Madrid's own uh, own handling of the of the whole saga and the whole situation for the last for the last year or so. I saw this coming, Kian. We talked about this last uh, September, last August, and I I was one of the few people who said that this could be happening. That I I really thought that it was going to be very difficult for Mbappe to 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 stand and, and ultimately um, yeah stand all the pressure that was going to to come his way and you know I think that as I said in my in my takeaway cycle today you can all the listeners can can check it up on on managing Madrid I think that um, PSG planned for this as soon as they got embarrassed and humiliated at the Bernabeu in the in the round of 16 i think that's what happened well you and i had discussions both in the winter time but also as far back as the actual summer fiasco and it ultimately not happening even after real just offer that while a lot of people thought it was absolutely insane to make that offer for mbappe uh that uh you know we kind of we kind of provide the other perspective that like it's not like we we there's a whole video I think actually we posted on YouTube even that's for free from our patron discussion that was like it's actually these are there are ways that Mbappe can stay at PSG and these are the reasons why and a lot of them were just financial and I think a lot of people were like guys there's no way right and so now reflecting on it and I'm just Liverpool just scored to make a two one it's on in the background. Uh, Mane just made it 2-1. That's happening while we record this. But it wasn't... It's a loud goal. It's a loud goal, it seems. You're right. Flag's up. This is a loud... We're both, we're both kind of doing our homework here as we record this podcast. This is the <laughs> yeah, life yeah. of Real Madrid coverage. Is, you know, I'm just multitask. keeping my fingers crossed that Liverpool don't win this just so that Mane doesn't have a chance to win the Ballon d'Or. <laughs> if, That's if, not happening if he wins, anyway. Don't worry. If he wins next... Oh, hopefully, man. Hopefully. Uh, Thiago also left injured yeah. before halftime. Be uh, yeah. curious to see what his uh, report is after the game, but regardless, yeah, yeah we we kind of did provide that perspective, and I think a lot of people felt like, no, man, this is crazy. We're gonna get him for free. Let's let's save that money yeah. and, and allocate it yeah. elsewhere, and that that obviously turned out not to be the case. But when you say Rams are not at fault, and and they are not, it's not just PSG that are to blame and stuff, and the system, etc. What is it that you think Rams could have done differently though in this situation? Well, for once, I think that they shouldn't have trusted Mbappe's word when all money is involved. Mm, that's one thing. I think Florentino Perez is a man of business. He knows business. He didn't trust Figo's word back in 2000. I think that when you are compromising the, the, the entire transfer policy of your team for the last five seasons or so, you don't trust someone's word. You trust signature. You trust facts you you trust things actually happening words okay it's fine reports in spain say that florentino was talking to mbappe once every two weeks or so and that mbappe gave him his word and promise but promises don't exist and are not valid when when oil money and and these countries are involved these countries can can literally do anything everything to to turn us every kind of situation like this one around and, and to change things. So I think Florentino should have do something like he did with Figo back in 2000, some kind of penalty for Mbappe to, 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 if he got, if he changed his mind, 
And if that wasn't possible, ultimately, I think you 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 had to put an expiration date to your offer so that you make sure that you still have time for a plan B and ultimately sign Haaland, which isn't happening right now because Mbappe, conveni- Mbappe and PSG conveniently decided to wait until one week after Haaland signed for for Manchester City to announce that he was going to sign an, an extension. I think that's the two things that Real Madrid should have done differently. Apart from possibly from a marketing and, and, and yeah, from a marketing perspective, do not leak that this is a done deal to to to, to the media and, and and do not be so optimistic about it all because you're, you're you are only going to get these proud people of of Qatar more mad and and more willing to to extend his contract. That that last part I, I agree with. I mean, I'm not sure what you could have done differently in terms of negotiations and and coaxing Mbappe to sign a deal, which I I don't really see why he would do that personally. With Figo, it was a little bit different because with Figo actually there was a way to compensate him financially also if uh, if Florentino didn't get elected. Uh, right. So it's with Mbappe, it was a little bit more difficult to coax him into doing that. So I just don't, I really honestly don't know what he could have done differently as a whole in terms of getting Mbappe. I think. What about the expiration date? Does it make sense to you? In a way, it does, but like I'm just. You sign, sign, our, sign our offer before March 31st. Or it's over. And if you don't, we're going to leak to the media that. I know it's, this is aggressive, but you know you're dealing with very aggressive people in business right here, like like Qatar, uh, like the the Emir of Qatar and all that. So, you know, this is you cannot trust someone's word in this, man. I I I I just don't think you can. I think it's not smart to do so, and I think Florentino wouldn't have done the same um, years ago. And I think that uh, you know Florentino treated this as if PSG were any other club in football history, as if they were Tottenham when we tried to sign Bale, as if they were Manchester City when we signed Cristiano, uh, Manchester United when we signed Cristiano Ronaldo. And this is, quite frankly, this is a country who has spent billions of dollars to, 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 to a sports wash, uh, um, their, 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 pol- their politics and all that uh, in, a, in, a, in a FIFA uh, World Cup. And they're doing to they're going to do whatever it takes to to extend Mbappe's contract, and you don't trust someone's word in such a an important uh, transfer for your club when you have compromised the entire future and, and transfer policy of the club for the last few years. I don't think. I don't hate hate the expiration uh, idea. I just had to think about it a little bit in terms of what that would actually mean. Because does it mean? If you say, let's say, we just put a random date on March March thirty first, like you said, and then does that mean you just move on from him and you just you just don't count on him at all? And if he comes yeah. back and says I'm coming, then you just ignore him completely. Yeah, well, you make up your mind by my by March thirty first, or for example, as soon as you knew that Real Madrid were uh, were going to play against Manchester City in the Champions League, okay, you, sub- you either sign or you don't by the end of the round of 16. We need to plan our future depending on whether or not you sign your contract, man. I, I think it's actually very reasonable. We, I mean, we can... Our entire future cannot depend on your decision, man. I realize that this is a difficult decision for you, and that they're offering a lot of money and all that and everything you want. But, you know, I think Real Madrid would have a point here. Like, as soon as the round of 16 is over, okay, we'll, we give you an, uh, an extra week because of how tough that, that loss was for you and all that. Uh, fine. But a week after that game, you either tell us, n- not tell us, you either sign the contract, something you are uh, allowed to do, you either sign the contract or the deal is off. And we move on and we sign Haaland. I understand what you're saying. I just think it was a little bit easier said than done because I think I think Mbappe's argument in that situation would have been and look, it, we all know that it was in the end we know what happened. We know what happened that he kind of sold his dream and he became uh <laughs> let's be honest, like what, a half almost like half of a billion 
half a billionaire. Like he's insanely rich right now. Okay. We kind of know what happened, but I think at the time the club probably would have been like, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm, I think the club stance on this would have been, uh, and I don't, I don't know what, uh, oh, sorry. I just got distracted by the Liverpool game because I saw Salah coming in. Um, I'm I, too I, aggressive. I get it. No, just that, like, yeah, it's like, how much do you want to piss off this player? If, I get uh, it. And, and also, like, there, the stance probably would have been from Mbappe, like, look, I don't want to disrespect the PSG fans and stuff by announcing it now, is my guess. Now, maybe... No, no, they, you, you, don't have to anna- you don't have to announce it. I'm just sign it and just keep it a secret yeah, for a few it. months. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You just sign it and have a guarantee and not someone's word about the, uh, the whole situation. So I think, and I'm just going to turn off the Liverpool game because it's too distracting. I just want to focus on the podcast. <laughs> I th- so I think what you're saying is correct. I and especially now with hindsight, we know what eventually what he dis- what he decided to do. So now we can kind of bury that aspect of it too. But I, there are a couple of patron questions that were coming in, and I thought I would uh, save them for today's podcast. So the first one is from Adam Dorsey. Um, he says, I won't go into depth about my feelings regarding this, but I will say this. It's his choice where he wants to play, and that is his prerogative. What bothers me is that he used Real Madrid to leverage a better deal at PSG, which is disrespectful to Florentino and Maridisas everywhere. Putting all that aside, I'm curious how PSG can afford to pay him all this money in addition to the enormous wages they are paying their other players. Does the FFP not apply to them? I'm simply trying to understand how they can throw all this money around with no repercussions. This is this is the way European football and UEFA are operating at the moment. They simply don't care about how they can uh, register these players. And, and here's the question: Does the financial fair play not apply to them? The answer is no. It's it's quite simple and quite clear. I don't want to sound like too uh, harsh or or use harsh harsh words. It's a, definitely a fair and and a reasonable question from from Adam he, uh, Adam here, but it's just that simple of an answer, to be honest. So what I wanted to say about that also is that the problem to me isn't financial fair play. It's that this is, everything needs to be overhauled. I think it's because if you look at financial fair play, it's and I mentioned this on the podcast yesterday, but it's designed to just make sure clubs don't go bankrupt. So it's designed to make sure clubs. If they're going to go into the negative and, and suffer losses, then they have to prove that they can fund that those losses and back it up, which essentially all these state back clubs can. But it's it's meant to, for also for the situation we had a few years ago where Levante couldn't pay their staff and their players for that not to happen, to make sure that La Liga and La Liga itself is pretty strict about that stuff. Like we've seen that to be fair, like, and that's why La Liga like there are nothing's going to happen out of that that letter right. but all the points they no. brought up actually made sense oh, and yeah. Yeah. and to be fair to them they've always stuck stuck with it you know they've it's not just because of this the timing of this is obviously people are going to roll their eyes and be like well la liga's butt hurt because they didn't get a superstar in their league but the reality is they've always stood by this they've yeah. they've they've held their clubs accountable and they were very vocal about this when neymar went there as well and I, yeah, and this current point, by the way, has made sense for the last three, four seasons. Yeah. It's not like the, it's making sense now. They've been overspending and, and simply not caring and not abiding by the financial fair play for years. Um, so they, we need to overhaul the system. And we, we, can't, we just can't let this shit be allowed. We, this, can't, this can't be allowed. And, and I, would, I, wanna, I don't know if you saw this, but I wanted to respond to a tweet by Gary Lineker too. I don't know if you saw it. Gary Lineker said yesterday, quote, I love Spanish football, but the bleeding about Mbappe staying at PSG is ruining the sport. It's a bit too much. The two Spanish giants have always attracted and paid enormous sums for the game. Superstars. No one else got a look in. Can't always have things your uh, your way. Hold up. That's – sorry, Gary, but that, that does not apply to what we're talking about here at all. What we're talking about here, if you're if he's referring to, let's say, 2009 – when we brought in Ronaldo, Kaka, Benzema, Chabi, Alonso, uh, our net spend during those whole years, those those years, it's they were all self-funded and we oh. were positive balance sheets and they were absolutely they, they all abided by the rules. What we're talking about right now is 
I'm just making sure I get these numbers correct. Mm-hmm. Last season, 225 million in the red with transfers for PSG. We're talking about a, pl- a club that can just bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed money. Be in the red, be in the red, be in the red, be in the red. The salaries are through the roof. None of it is structured. And it's a bottomless pit because they can just fund it because it's literally owned by a country. We're at a stage now where clubs are competing with countries. They're not competing with clubs. They're p- competing with countries. This makes no sense, man. Not for, for all this sh- shit that American sports get, none of this would be allowed. None of this Oh, would no, be- no, absolutely, absolutely not. So, absolutely Gary, not. like, d- don't, don't come in and say Real Madrid and Barcelona can't talk about this. Like, it's not, it, 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 this makes no sense. This is bad for the sport. This is bad for the sport. This is yeah. insane. Yeah. It's insanity what they are what they are doing. I agree. At the same time, Kian, you know this is what's happening. I know this is what's happening. Real Madrid should have known this is what's happening. This is my point. My, I mean, of course, we, of course, football needs to this particular aspect of of, uh, of the current market and current structure of the game and, and the clubs and all that. But in particular, and in regards to this transfer Real Madrid should have, seen it, should have seen it coming it's just the way it is man so one more question and then I want to explore what you just said more and also talk about what's next because what's done is done a uh, question from Adrian Rios who joined Patreon <laughs> our, oh, he's been a patron for a long time sorry he says hey guys <laughs> I paid the extra tier because I'm dying to ask this question with all of the Mbappe news coming out and potential transfers what hurts more is Mbappe backing out of his ward or, or sorry, what hurts more? He's giving us two options. Mbappe backing out of his ward or Zidane potentially coaching PSG and being a deciding factor in why Mbappe is staying. I feel like the latter, if it happens, will destroy me. Zidane knows how hard we worked for Mbappe and knows his direct effect if, we were to, if he were to coach PSG. I feel like I would view him a lot worse than Mbappe given he's a Madrid legend and knows the club's whole game plan around Mbappe. Obviously, the latter. I agree. I agree with Adriana. I, I definitely agree here that Fidan coaching this particular version of PSG would be a disaster for for Real Madrid and definitely also for his even for his legacy in, in Real Madrid, to be honest, and also in France, by the way. Which is which is mainly. Hold on here. I don't. I don't think this is not going to happen because of the Real Madrid ties. But because of the, of his ties with Marseille and the whole town, I think obviously the, we're talking about Marseille and Paris being the main rivalry in France, similar to Madrid and Barcelona. He's obviously a legend in Marseille. He was born there, and, and even him, I think himself tweeted a video last night uh, saying congratulations to, to Olympic Marseille returning to Champions League football and all that. I don't think. Uh, maybe this is just my 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 I don't know my optimistic side speaking, but I don't I don't think Zidane is going is going to do it. Uh, I just I just cannot see it happening just because of the Madrid ties and also the uh, how big of a legend he is in in the whole town of Marseille. I don't think it's going to happen. I agree. I can't see it. I refuse to see it. It won't happen. It's not even going to enter my mind. If it does somehow happen. It's a twisted universe we live in, and I want yeah. no part of it. I'm out. And I'm it's out. over. I'm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm just out on life. I'm. I'm. I, I can't. I can't even fathom that. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, though, this, so I'm not. If this happens, if this happens, it's like living proof that you know humans are evil. People, people, people inside the sport don't see history and don't see clubs the way fans do. So this, this would have no point, in my opinion. The, the the whole sport will have no point. Like if Fidan himself, such a legend, um, decides to do this, you know, what's the point of following and rooting for one team when even the big legends and the big uh, figures of the sport don't don't even care about feelings and about and about 
history of, of clubs and all that. So, But I don't think it's going to happen. The other reason why it's not going to happen, apart from the reasons you mentioned, the you know, and the Marseille ties, the Real Madrid ties. For I mean, it would be you mentioned Marseille ties might be bigger, but at the same time, like he knows what he's if he he knows if he would take that job, his Real Madrid legacy is completely just warped and twisted, and it he, he's friends with Florentino, he's friends with Benzema. The loyalty yeah. and allegiance to the yeah. club and those players and what he's yeah. done at the club is too strong to break that. He won't do it. But the other aspect of this yeah. is that the money aspect of it, this is a this is a guy who's walked away from money, if I'm not wrong, three times. He left his contract as a player early. He put millions on the table. And both times he left as a coach, he left money yeah. on the table. He does not care about yeah. that stuff. He cares about, nah. you know, he's, he's just a different breed. So, no, it's not going to happen. Let's, let's not worry about it. Um, the Mbappe thing, I don't know if you saw his statement that he put out. He said he'll be supporting us in the Champions League final. I don't know if he's just trying to amend some stuff. Um, I'll get your quick answer on this. In three years, okay. we kind of laughed about this, but also we're just kind of half crying, half laughing, half joking, half serious. I don't know what it was. It was just a bit of emotions <laughs> mixed into it. In three years, is that reported Holland, uh, <laughs> release clause and in three years is also when Mbappe <laughs> nah, come on. I'm, I'm just asking the question because I have to ask all right, have... all right, all right. what are the chances that in th- three years even if Mbappe is begging like please I'm, I'm, I'm ready I'm in my peak now me and Holland together Benzema's retired by then let's do it is, is Real Madrid just going to be like no, you're done. You had your chance. I hope so. I hope I, so. I, I, I agree about the hope so part, but I'm just asking, is, I don't there, know. I, is the sporting project of Mbappe and Haaland together too big for the club to be like, okay, should we, should we just forget what happened? Well, you have to be... I, and I'm serious now, and I'm not talking about uh, sour grapes and and, and and such things. I think that we have a point when we say that Mbappe would be a problem for the club, you know, considering his attitude and and the attitude from from his whole camp and all that. So I think there are serious concerns, and I think that right now he's turned Real Madrid down for. The last two times, I'm not talking about last summer, but the, the last time he, when he was in Monaco. So obviously he's a fine player. Him together with Haaland would be great, especially even more so after Benzema is retired or, or, or left the club. But I think chances are pretty low if Florentino is, is still around. I agree. Um, the, I, I, I have thought about a lot of things since yesterday too. Yeah, hold, hold, just quick point. Yeah, like, go ahead. Florentino didn't want to give Ramos the extension they initially offered him because of the timing issues and because Ramos initially said no. And we know how big Ramos is. So that's, that's I mean, that speaks by, uh, for itself about, you know, how Florentino feels when he's quote unquote betrayed or or, or he feels someone is using him. I think everything you're saying is true and I agree with it, but I just, there's like a 1% part of me that thinks that there would be just some forgive and forget to this because well, the thing with Ramos is also he was older. Maybe it was a little bit older, to, uh, easier to move on from him. Um, like the example of like Odegaard not really wanting to be here, for example, he wasn't like he's good, but he's not like Mbappe good to be like, well, let's try to right. make it work or right. And I think, and I think back to Figo. Figo's a type of player who, it if there was like he was the last person you'd expect Real Madrid to sign because he literally was anti Madridista. He hated us. He would give public speeches about yeah. how much he hated us. He was a uh, he was a supporter of the Catalan uh, movement of the Catalan independence. He was basically more cooler than anyone. And even though he wasn't Catalan, 
And Florentino really wanted to sign him because he was arguably the best player in the world at that time. I mean, he won the Ballon d'Or the year he arrived with us. So there's part of me that thinks like because Mbappe is so good and as much as this sucked and it wouldn't have sucked, honestly, if it was just like if, if we didn't have a long saga, it wouldn't have sucked. No one would have cared if he just didn't he didn't keep saying like flirting with us and wanting to yeah. and telling and telling Florentino all this stuff. And if he had just signed with PSG and it was quiet, no one would have cared about this shit. But because he egged us on and then basically bargained this bargain used us as a bargain chip and then became super rich at the last second, obviously that doesn't sit well with anyone. And what I also think about is France are so talented. You know, we even talk about the players we really want in the squad, like Chuomeni. We already have Kamavinga, and their depth chart is insane across so many different positions. And they're so talented. But just from a team chemistry standpoint, they had so many problems in the last World Cup. And all of these stories yeah. that came out about the problems in the dressing room, the the amount of divas yeah. and prima donnas in there, the one thing that they had going on for them and was so important for them in the UEFA Nations League was that when Benzema came back, their two best players, Benzema and Mbappe, got along got really, along, really yeah. well. And the chemistry yeah. between them on and off the field was perfect. And now I wonder what that looks like because I think Ooh. there's so many cryptic messages in Benzema's posts that he feels betrayed. And I, I just kind of wonder what that dynamic looks like. If you want uh, my honest thoughts, and I realize that this is kind of a bold take and a, and a hot take and a kind of a bold prediction, I think that Benzema will seriously disappear from, from France's squad list before the World Cup, if Mbappe, won, if, if Mbappe says so. Like, if all of a sudden everything in the camp is weird next June, and if Mbappe feels that Benzema is... Uh, um, felt betrayed by what happened this month. I I totally think that Mbappe will will try to to, to get him away of the of the squad list. This is this is just my take, my take, and I think that he has uh, this power for sure. It's getting a bit dark now. I mean, <laughs> that's a take. It's a hell of a take. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's a hot take. Um, Especially even more so if if Benzema is a Ballon d'Or, by the way. But so what I wanted to ask you is also the kind of what's next stuff. Millions of names have been thrown out from the transfer market. Yeah. I wanted to give you my two cents and then get your thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. I completely agree that there's a lot of great ways we can spend the money and make this team stronger than it was last season. I mean, this season. And uh, there are a few positions, like we talked about, you know, the right-back position, and there's, like, different, you know, there's different parts of the squad you can bolster. Now you'll definitely need a backup striker because Benzema will be playing more minutes next season if you count international stuff. And yeah. Mbappe can't be there as your backup striker, and you can't piece it together mm-hmm. so you may need a backup striker assuming you don't count on Jovic and Mariano so there's that the right wing option I've seen way too many names that I think are just insane and half of those players don't even play right wing like I've seen Dybala I've seen Darwin Nunez I've seen who else have I seen Son that makes no sense uh, Lewandowski that doesn't fit who else have I seen that was just absurd? Mane wouldn't fit. All of these players would their most of these their best position is either right or left wing or striker. Yeah, they would get in the way. Yeah. The one I would be thrilled with is Gnabry, which I kind of pains me in a way because I haven't seen any reputable links to Gnabry. It's just been fans talking about him, so I don't know if there's anything there. But I love him. I think he's fantastic. I think he would immediately improve our attack as a right winger. Uh, Mares and Salah, I'm not. Uh, they're at least realistic because their contracts are expiring and they haven't renewed yet. Mm-hmm. But they don't. They don't excite me just because of their age. And also, I'm still a little bit scared of giving big contracts to 
players who are 29, 30, if you know what I mean. And beyond that, I mean, like Anthony from Ajax, to be honest, I haven't really seen. I feel a bit (laughs) underqualified to talk about him, but it doesn't excite me. Like I've seen Rafinha as a name, like, yeah, Why you would... need an obvious upgrade of the over exactly Rigo. like exactly. obvious exactly and 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 I, if 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 it's not like Gnabry probably and maybe one or is two he that others big of an upgrade though Gnabry is awesome yeah Gnabry is a killer he's 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 very good okay but is he that big of an up, of an upgrade to make it you know to spend eighty million on him I think it's enough of an upgrade where you would be really happy with. Nabri, Benz- both, yeah, and then Rodrigo as your killer right. off the bench again. Okay, because that yeah. that I would rather that than have Rodrigo start and Asensio be the guy off the bench. To be I fair, think we're a much better I, team this way. And I don't care about his positioning in this case. Um, I think you can make it work. Um, again, from a from a fit perspective. This doesn't make any sense, probably. But the only name that, because of his pure quality and potential, and you know, and and overall instinct, instinct about the game and all that, the only the only name that makes sense to me and that I would actually support a lot his signing is Joao Felix. But I realize this is impossible because of him being in, uh, in Atletico until 2026. So, but that's the only one name that excites me. After Mbappe and Haaland are gone, I get it. Navri is good. He would be an upgrade. He would improve the squad. But you know, he's not that exciting of a candidate as as Joao Felix to me. Where do you? Where would you play him? I don't know. I, I and I and, and I get it. I I think it's uh it's not the ideal candidate probably, but he's the only one that you know I can see replacing Benzema in two years in terms of a pure quality perspective. He's the only one I would be confident starting and replacing Benzema in two years' time. The only one. After Haaland and Mbappe, for sure. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Jao Felix. I just don't know if he has the goals in him to play that role. Do you- I think he has the quality to to match Benzema's goals this season in a in a Real Madrid system. Obviously, we know that playing for Simeone probably hurts his numbers a lot. I don't know. I, I suppose like, and Benfica was his best goal scoring year, fifteen goals in twenty six games. Um, at Atletico, I just don't know if he fits in that system. Regardless, so maybe it's not fair to judge him on that. But I I am a Jao Felix fan. I also just like the grace with which he plays, and he's a smart player. Right. I just don't know if he has like 20, 25 goals in him a season to play that role, but right, that would be my concern with him. Um, I don't know. While I am bummed, I will say I woke. I'll tell you what, how I felt waking up early today. I felt more angry at Mbappe because I just really reflected on what he did this whole time and his decision and the way he approached Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That made me, I actually felt more angry. I actually feel like I'm going to, I actually feel like I'm going to become more and more angry with him. Not just from this, but also just with antics from him now. I don't, I don't know. Mm. Now, because I, I, my, my perception of him has completely changed. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, yes. I, I also he woke knows, up. Kylian, that he's not going to, to be a football legend playing for, for Manchester City and he just doesn't care because of money. S- that's and that's I think that's part of the reason why it made me sad. It made me sad for him in a sense, because. And, and I also I don't know if you saw this, but uh, he lost. Someone pointed this out. He lost hundreds of thousands of followers on social media yesterday, <laughs> which obviously he doesn't care about because yeah, well, he still has like seven million followers or whatever. Yeah, and he won hundreds of thousands of euros. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So that's the part that makes me sad about this because everyone's and. It makes me sad for him. It doesn't necessarily make me sad for us. It makes me sad for him that like everyone's like, well, his loss, Real Madrid are bigger, we're going to win trophies, he's going to kill his Ballon d'Or chances. What makes me sad is that I don't think he cares. What, is he going to just roll around and cry in his yeah. money? Clearly yeah. money is important to him. So 
he oh. wins either way, I guess. <laughs> if he's happy with this, if that, then I don't think he cares about legacy and stuff. And I'm not sure that's the player I want anymore. And I know that's exactly. easy to Absolutely. say because they're like, oh, this is a butthurt Real Madrid fan talking. Like, you don't want him anymore after you wanted him this whole time. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I, reflecting on it now today. You saw his true colors. Yeah, and everyone, we've talked about this so many times. Everyone who's in the team right now is super lovable. Everyone wants to be here. I love the messages that our players were putting on social media yesterday because it wasn't like, in, in the wording wasn't like, hey, Mbappe, you don't have what it takes to be here. We're proud of being Maridisa. It was more cryptic than that, but it was a clear message that like everyone was saying. They were just talking about how much they love the club, and you can see it in the way. This is, It's not something that's made up. Everyone is unified right now, and... I like. I brought up your tweet yesterday on the podcast, the one where you said Mbappe was going to eventually make problems in the team. If it was not now, it was is going to be later because just based on what he did yesterday it was, it was completely yeah. obnoxious, man. It, it, it really, yeah. So I, I, it's just that it's just he clear, he clearly is not going to. While he probably makes us better, a better football team, you know. There are some sometimes there's just things that are more important. You know, you know. Yeah. My 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 difficult my challenge is though, I don't want to judge anyone. It, it's really, really difficult for me to do in this case. Because if someone puts a briefcase in front of you, Lucas, and it's like one has oh, yeah. a billion dollars, one the other one has two hundred million dollars, what which one do you take? Yeah, 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 sure. My answer is I I take the two hundred million <laughs> and not the billion <laughs> and play for the club that I love. But that's a Real Madrid fan in me talking. If I'm not a Real Madrid fan, yeah. then then uh, I'd probably take the billion. But yeah, I don't know, we got like, to see his true colors. We got mm. to see his true colors last night. And by the way, he published like five or ten minutes before uh, hitting in this. Uh, in this podcast, he published an, uh, a statement on social yeah. media saying that he will be Real Madrid's mm, number one fan next Saturday. So this is this is just ridiculous. Man. Yeah. This is, Thanks for letting us know, buddy. Thank you. This is him right now. I, I think this is. I, I wrote it on my on my takeaways article. I think he's he's mm, the, the, the the how you say he's been used by, by Al Khelaifi and. And and the Emir of Qatar to to embarrass Real Madrid all along. I think like this is this is how I feel about it. To be honest, I think that he has been the I don't know how to say the exact word the accomplice or the psychic, if you will, in this uh, in this plan by by PSG. I think I think this is what's happened. I think that. that he, both PSG and, and, and Mbappe decided to wait until Haaland was gone to tell Real Madrid that he was sustained. I think this is what's happened here. And I think they're, they're all having a laugh at Real Madrid's expense right now. Certainly al Khelaifi and the Emir of Qatar, that's for sure. And based on how he has acted, I think that um, Mbappe might feel the same way. One clip that really didn't sit well with me was when the PSG fans were singing their Puta Madrid chants or mm-hmm. whatever it was. I don't I don't really remember what the mm-hmm. chant was. Mm-hmm. There was a smug look on his face. Mm-hmm. And it just and that's rough laughing as well. I didn't see that part, but you know it. That didn't sit well with me. No, no, so, no! Absolutely, absolutely. Is there anything else that you wanted to uh, get off your chest before we wrap it up? No, just that I think Real Madrid need to to move on as tough as it is. I think that ultimately doing some desperate signings this summer would not be the the right thing to do. I think that in a poor transfer market, which is the current transfer market without Haaland and Mbappe, I think cash is king. I don't think you need to overspend. I think Club in European football knows that Real Madrid are probably in a desperate situation in terms of uh, of transfers. I think every pl- every player is going to come overpriced, even more so than than you more than usual. So I think that unless 
the right guy comes uh, and becomes available, I think that you probably need to sit tight and and not sign at least any attacker. Obviously, Chuameni is a, is a very interesting target. You were already interested in him before this happened. So I would only go after the players you already plan to sign before this happened, even if you are probably going to face a tough season offensively next year. I think you trust on, on Rodrigo taking that leap instead yeah. of you know pay, paying 60 million for the next job. Agree. I agree. I agree. No, no need to sign someone just for the sake of it. But if someone comes along and it's a good deal, do it. But other than that, don't yeah. don't force it. Don't force it at all. I, I still think we can be a better team next season than we were this season. And even if we don't sign anyone, there's part of me that thinks we naturally will be because these younger players are going to get better. Kamavinga's going to play more. Rodrigo's going to play more. These guys are still going to continue to, to develop and get better. Yeah. So even if we don't yeah. sign, we'll be better. But I actually think we can... We were, we're also getting Rudiger, so it's going to be a better team. So we and just have to keep that in perspective. Yeah, perhaps you can use that pine, that uh, that part of the mo- at least a part of the money you were mm, focusing on and spending on Mbappe. You can probably use at least a bit of it to maybe improve the the right back spot. I don't know, not only to a many, but maybe improve other other aspects of the. Of the squad instead of you know obviously going for a big home run in the attacking spots, which I don't think those uh, kind of moves will be available at the in the in the current transfer market anymore. Do you see what's happening in the city game? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, insane. <laughs> wow. Okay. Just in case. I'm, gl- some... I, I'm glad, by the way, it's not that I support Manchester City here, but um, Liverpool. No, not because I hate Liverpool. By the way, I think. I even have more sympathy towards Liverpool and Manchester City as a club. But obviously, Liverpool not winning the Premier League probably increases Ben's much chances of winning the Ballon d'Or, no matter what happens next Saturday. Well, let's see how that affects them, and let's see uh, let's see what happens in the next week or so, because now we're going to shift our attention to more Liverpool final preview stuff and move away from this Mbappe stuff. That chapter is closed. Let's move on and let's talk about a summer of hopefully Champions League celebrations, but also what's next, transfers and all that stuff. Thanks everyone for listening. Lucas, thank you for your time on a Sunday evening. Hope that you you can stay cool in Valencia. Take care, buddy. Yeah, we'll try it. You too.